want to give you a, at least a few minutes to throw out some questions to our panelists while they're up here. Um, we'd ask you to keep, keep these concise. If you have something that's really specific to your setting, they'll be available uh, during our breaks to ask and bounce ideas off and that kind of thing. But the things that might uh, appeal to the wider audience in the room, um, we have some folks going around with the microphones. So with that, we'll open the floor, stick your hand in the air. If you have a question you'd like to fire at one of our panelists or all of them. This is for Colleen. I am a pastor of four rural parishes. So I empathize with what you're saying about people from one parish not wanting to drive to the other or only going to church when the mass is at their church. Have you come up with any solutions? Have you found anything that has worked so far in terms of integrating them into an actual family, uh, a single community as opposed to all these small separate communities? You know, I don't think I would say that we have the exact answer, but we have tried to do a number of things. When we have planned sort, like the retreats, or when we tried to, you know, um, do the Lexio Divina, or whatever it was, we would move to around the cluster. We, you know, didn't always stick with one parish, trying to meet people where they were. The other thing is, um, um, another thing was um, just one thing, um, that um, we treat people that come to church, you know, when we talk about welcoming coming to church, you know, in, a, in, a, in our small parishes, we don't get a lot of outsiders that come for visits, you know, so, but we do get occasionally people from the other parishes coming to our parish, and we need to treat them just like we would for someone that was visiting in the sense of making them feel like they belong, introducing them, you know. All it takes is for somebody to walk up to somebody and say, hey, have you met so-and-so? They're from such and such a parish. And you begin to build that, um, you begin to build that idea that we're all one, that we're not just separate. So I don't think I have an absolute answer to how you solve that problem. Thank you, Father Dan. Another question. Um, Deacon Kent. Is there any um, examples that you might give where welcoming and belonging has actually enabled a parish to respond to like a crisis that has occurred in a, in a, in a larger community? John Cooper? I was going to say, this seems very uh, apropos for John to address. Well, you know, that whole building collapse thing was interesting uh, because in, in one sense, in one sense, uh, it was kind of like business as usual at St. Anthony's because we're, we're kind of like a field hospital down there. You know, with McAnthony Window, it's like, uh, and, and it's not just McAnthony Window hours. The people just come in off the streets at any point and that sort of thing. And so in some sense, it was kind of like just the thing that we do, but then to say, wow, there's a building that just fell down across the street, you know? Uh, and, uh, but, you know, I think that what I loved about that was is that everyone, whether they were parishioners or just from the community, really came together to help out. And that's, that's a beautiful, beautiful kind of thing, you know? I actually thought of it when you showed your stance. Yeah. Because, and I shared this with Father Rudy when I saw him a couple of weeks ago that you guys are so practiced at it that you knew what to do. And that's something that I think we can all learn from our parishes of uh, you know, going through the motion so that we're ready when those opportunities come along. It doesn't take a bunch of lifting. Another question, maybe one more? And I, we'll... I have one. Um, here. Boy, there, uh, I was like the voice um, of It's angels. another question for Colleen. Um, I really liked um, what you mentioned about the little short parish retreats, like the two hour, you know, at the start of Advent or, you know, uh, different things like that. Um, and I'm wondering if you could tell a little more about that, like who organized it? Was it, who, did you have a speaker or was it your priest or like what did you actually do at this two hour retreat? You know, well, I'll, t oh, uh, you, we took, um, 
Um, the very first one we did, you know, the internet is a wonderful tool. And there are a lot of people out there that have done things, though you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, and I, I can remember Googling Advent Retreat. <laughs> of course, you know, once you get through all the, you know, here's this two week, you know, place you can go up in the Catskills or whatever, you would eventually come across things. And I can remember that, for example, the first Advent Retreat uh, we did, it was all uh, done on the letters of Advent as a guide. So, you know, it was A for adoration and, um, you know, we did a scriptural uh, rosary. And so we used the guideline that came from the internet and then we adjusted to the way we wanted it to work. And the other thing we did when we, then we incorporated music. And again, with five parishes, we have five choirs. But we put the word out and said, would you take part? And all of a sudden, we had a cluster choir that agreed, you know, they love to sing. So they came for that, and they kind of took over that aspect. So um, we didn't start from scratch. We sought out what was out there and adapted it and, and changed it, and then assigned parts to everybody on our team and kind of created the script. and. It wasn't as difficult as it sounds. And again, it's, you know, it was only a couple of hours. So it's very doable. If you would like a copy, I'll, I'll uh, send you one of what we've done in the past. And another great example of, you know, maybe pull Trevor Pullinger aside uh, in our break or something. Or some of our diocesan staff have some people that can get you some resources to do some of that stuff too. So thank you. Oh, Bishop, oh. Well, I'll take your question. Okay. <laughs> And they, um, so, you know, you think about becoming Catholic maybe, or you're, you're looking for a parish, so they, they put that out there, but then there are people there that you, I don't know if you do this all the time, but here's people that you can talk to, like, right then, they don't have to come to the parish office sometime during the week, they can, you engage in, like, right away, which is really good. Staff people, I don't know who, who else, how you did that exactly, but they're, you know, they're at the doors, come, go talk to those people, so I thought that was really effective. Yeah, and uh, I had a, a Baptist who has never converted to the Catholic faith that comes every week with his wife who took me out to lunch uh, one time when I first got to St. Anthony's and he built up to tell me because at first, Bishop, what we were doing is we were saying, you know, call the office or come to the RCIA meeting and that sort of thing. And he's like, you need to do like the Baptists do. You got them right in front of you, do an altar call, you know? And so that's where we started saying, you know, and there's staff here to talk to you right now, kind of thing. Awesome. Can I say one last thing? You can. Well, I probably can't just say one last thing. I want to comment about, uh, Dan's comment about the power of listening. If you've not had the opportunity um, to get your hands on the things that came up at your parish listening session, please do if you can. I had the opportunity to actually go to like four of the listening sessions within our, our cluster and that was powerful just to hear people as Dan said, you know, nobody had trouble voicing what broke their heart about the church. That could have gone on for hours. But when you said to them, what brings you joy about your faith? And there was dead silence. That was eye-opening as far as, okay, here's, what we, here's where we need to do some work. So if you can get your hands on what it was actually said if you weren't there, I would suggest doing that. Thank you, Carly. Let's hear it for our panelists here.